Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to properly set up a Polygon HDR in 3ds Max with Redshift. Okay, so this is the scene that we're going to be working on today. Um, it's a simple sort of ArcVis scene um, with a camera, and that is literally it at this point. There's no materials assigned to this, we're just focusing on the lighting today. And as you can tell from this little viewport image, we don't have any lighting at the moment. So, let's get started. Now, I'll point out that the Redshift settings have already been uh, set up and configured, um, so we're all set up to use Redshift. So I'll just jump over to this lighting pad, uh, lighting panel, uh, select Redshift, and then I'm going to bring in a Redshift dome light. Okay. And now with the dome light selected, I'm going to jump over to this panel and bring in a bitmap. Now. Just navigating to the where we've kept our HDRs, uh, where I have anyway, and <laughs> these are the ones that we'll be working with today. And you can see three files. We've got a 16K EXR, a 2K e EXR, and a 16K JPEG. Now, to begin with, I'm going to bring in the 16K EXR, which is a really large file, um, which is why it's taken quite a while to process after I've clicked on it. Okay, so hit open, okay, there we go. So now we have some lighting in our scene. And if I were to hit render now, we should see some lighting from that. Good. Right, so what we wanna do now is rotate this to get the lighting set up that we want. Now, don't worry so much about the background at the moment. Let's just... So I'm going to rotate this to just about there, just because I've experimented with this before and that's a that's a nice place for it. But you'll notice an issue, and that is that we can see these buildings in the background, and that will, that will come through on the render as well. Now we will fix that, but first of all I want to do a quick render just to make sure that our lighting's looking the way we, it wants to be. Okay, so the scene looks good. The lighting I like exactly there, exactly how I had it set up previously, which is good. Now, We've got uh, two things that I want to address. One, the background. At the moment, we, we, we're seeing this building on the right there um, in the background, which just doesn't sort of tie in with, with our image at all. It looks kind of weird and strange. Uh, and the second thing is this took nearly three gig of memory to render. And we've not even got any materials. This is a relatively simple scene. There's no materials on it yet. And it took three gig literally just because of the size of this HDR image. Now, we're going to do two things now. First, we're going to change this 16K EXR to the 2K one. Okay, so yeah, there's the 2K one. That will load up a lot quicker. Okay. Good. Uh, now, we won't lose any quality in lighting from this, really. I'll run another render just to uh, demonstrate. And there we go. It looks almost identical. Um, one thing I will say, though, is uh, you, you'll notice how the background isn't quite as high quality as kind of you can you can see the pixels as it were It's a bit blurry, but the actual lighting in our scene looked pretty much identical And instead of using over 2 gig of memory to render this it was more at the 350 meg So a huge reduction in memory usage. So now all we need to do is change what we're seeing in the background So what I'm going to do is add in another dome light there we go. And for that first one, I'm going to go into the settings for it and I'm going to turn off the background. There we go. So with that turned off, we now won't see it in the in the uh, background. And what we're essentially going to do here is uh, add in it's almost like a backplate, but not in the way that the uh uh, that Redshift likes to see a backplate. That's more for a for a flat image rather than a spherically mapped sort of dome. Um, so I'm just going to minimise that so it doesn't get confusing. So the uh, original dome light is going to be responsible for lighting our scene. Okay, um, it's going to affect the diffuse lighting and the specular lighting, um, but it's not going to show up in the background. 
So now if I go to the second dome light, what we want to load into this one is the JPEG image. Now a JPEG image has no real lighting data, it's 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 eight or sixteen bit, one of the two. Um eight bit I can see here, there we go. Um so there's no lighting information in it. If I were to use that for the scene lighting, it would look horrible, but for a background, it's ideal. So let's load that in. And for the settings for this one, we don't want it to affect the lighting. So I'm gonna turn both of those off, but we do want it to affect the, um, the environment. There we go. making sure that I'm doing this right. I'm just gonna turn this one off for a second. So we're just seeing this one. There we go. So now what we wanna do is rotate this um, into a place that looks good for the background. But while still being fairly close to our original rotation because we don't want any objects that are in the background or the sky in general not to match the lighting in our scenes. So that's about where we had it on the original one. So I'm just going to rotate that that way a little and then rotate it um, along the local axis down that way a bit. So we've just got sky, but it's still quite closely matched to the original rotation. So now, if I jump over to this one and turn it back on, um, I'm not expecting to see it there. I'm wondering if I've missed a setting. No, I don't think I have. Weird. Ah, there we go. So visibility, sorry, off. We don't want to see that one. And now we're just seeing our, our background there. So now if I hit render, we should get really good lighting, but with a really nice, clean background. And there we go, our finished render. Looking good. Um, certainly ready for us to start putting materials on it or whatever else we want to do. And we are getting really high quality lighting. We're a nice high quality background and using only a fraction of the memory um, compared to using a high resolution EXR. So in summary, we've downloaded a HDR file from polygon.com, used the low resolution EXR to light our scene, while separately using a high resolution JPEG to provide the background.